Welcome to ECE 463 Modern Control, lecture number 21, Observers and Disturbances. And speaking of disturbances, we have Momo here coming by, coming by to say hi. So aside from your cat, um, you could have a system with input disturbances or output disturbances. An input disturbance would be something like with a metal bar. If I have an extra heating source, that looks like an extra input that the observer is not going to account for. Or if the temperature of the room is, slow, is colder than I expected, I'll have extra heat loss, so each node is going to lose a little bit of heat. There's also output disturbances. This is more calibration error on the sensor. When I calibrate the sensor, I want 30 degrees to be 30 degrees. If there's a constant offset, that appears as a constant output disturbance, so what I'm measuring is different than the true output by constant. That's a problem for observers. If I have an observer with an input disturbance or an output disturbance, that's going to change and bias the observer states. That's a problem because the observer states are used in your full state feedback, so if the states are wrong, you're really not sure what you're going to be getting with a closed loop system. So for example, Suppose I have an input disturbance. So I've got my plant, x dot equals ax plus bu, y equals cx, plus I've got disturbance, disturbance coming in at the input. Uh, the observer doesn't see that disturbance, so it's going to estimate the states based upon the input, ignoring the disturbance because it doesn't see it, the output, and the dynamics of the system. When you do that, the gain from the disturbance to the states is as follows. Take the error, the difference between the plant states and the estimator states. Uh, substitute, do a little bit of algebra, group the terms, and then at steady state, E is a constant, so S equals zero. The error will be A minus HC inverse times B times your disturbance. If you have a constant disturbance, my observer will no longer have zero error. The, it'll be different than my plant. And a couple examples. We can look at a ball and beam system and heat along a, a metal beam, RC circuit. So let's start with an input disturbance. Here the input to the plant is different than what the observer sees by a constant, and that constant in this case is 0.5. What that does is the observer thinks the input is the green line, the actual input's the blue line. I've got that constant offset. What that does is my states, my state estimates, are now wrong. And likewise, given bad information, it may or may not be stable. Second example is the ball and beam system. If I design the observer for a mass of one kilogram at the ball and a displacement of one meter, the observer will track the plant. In contrast, if I increase the mass of the ball to 1.1 kilogram, now the observer, the green line, is off. What the observer is seeing is an extra torque due to that extra 0.1 kilogram at 1 meter. The extra torque makes it think that the beam's gone up higher. Again, there's a constant offset on the states, and that's interpreted as the wrong beam angle. Likewise, you feedback the wrong beam angle, and the observer is not predicting how the plants can behave correctly. So, Input disturbances are a problem. Output disturbances are also a problem. If I have an output disturbance, say right here, the measured output is different than the actual output by a constant. What that does is that'll feed into the observer, and now my observer states are again off by a constant. You can see that mathematically. Uh, input the plant, the observer, take the difference, let us go to zero for a constant, and I wind up with the error is going to be a constant times the disturbance. Yeah, two examples here. If the output right here, y, is offset by 0.5, the observer sees the measured output. It thinks you're 0.5 higher than you actually are. That constant disturbance at the output propagates through the observer and biases your state estimates. So x of 5 is wrong, x of 10 is wrong, x of 15 is wrong. Second example, ball and beam system. The measured output 
is off by 5 centimeters. Pretty big error. What that measurement error does is where it thinks the ball is, is different than where it actually is by 5 centimeters. That propagates through the system through the observer. The angle that the observer estimates is again wrong. Everybody's off by a constant. So here's the problem. I've got a constant offset. How do I account for that in, in, in the observer so that my states are no longer biased? Well, that depends upon whether you have an input disturbance or an output disturbance. Let's start with the first case, an input disturbance. One way to do that is to add a dummy state, xd, that's my disturbance, that feeds into my plant. I now have an augmented system, the plant, plus the disturbance. There is no input to the disturbance. This presumably has a pole at s equals zero for constant. So this is just an integration constant. The initial condition tells you what xd is, and that feeds in. I'm going to set up an augmented system, the plant plus the disturbance. Again, I've got my x dot equals ax plus bu. The disturbance comes in through b times c sub d times the disturbance. The disturbance state is just an open loop system. In this case, it's a constant disturbance. ad is equal to zero. And that state has no input. It's not controllable. It's a disturbance. I'm not the one that controls it. But it does feed into the plant dynamics. Now build a full order observer for this augmented system. So what I'll do is I'll take a model of the plant. Here's your plant plus disturbance. Repeat it down here. That's your observer. The input of the plant is the input to the observer. Now come up with your observer gains, h. h will now have five terms. The first four terms get fed into the state estimates. The fifth term is fed into the disturbance estimate. If the observer then converges, then all the states x converge to, or xd converges to x, and my disturbance estimate, xde, converges to xd. So I'll take the augmented system, find the observer gains, I'm going to have five gains, the first four are times x, the last one is times my disturbance, and it should be stable. I can then simulate the augmented system. Uh, so here I actually have a tenth order system, my plant, my disturbance, my observer, its disturbance. And this is where the initial condition x0 comes in on that step 3 command. We've had that before, but we haven't used it. Now we use it. I'm going to make the initial condition on the plant 0. My disturbance, which is an open loop integrator, is initially 2. So I've got a disturbance of 2. Here's the estimate of my plant states and my estimate of the disturbance. Initially, my disturbance estimate is 0. It should converge to 2. I'll then give it a step input where u is just 1. And what happens is the red line is my disturbance estimate. It figures out that, uh, yep, I've got an extra 2 units of heat added to the system. That converges. All the other states converge. Now note that the disturbance estimate, the red line here, converges to the actual disturbance in about 4 seconds. That's expected since the observer poles were placed at minus 3, minus 3, minus 3, minus 3. The disturbance line, pink, is your 2. The estimate is the red line. And also note that all the states converge to their actual, actual value in spite of the disturbance. You can see that with the ball and beam system. Here I take the observer and augment it with a input disturbance. So my observer states become your a, b, zeros. So there's going to be constant disturbance that's fed in through the b matrix. And I find h to stabilize the augmented observer. What that looks like is the following. I've got an extra 0.1 kilogram on the mass that initially causes the observer states to diverge. The observer then estimates figures out what constant do I need to bias the input to force the output to match with the same input. It quickly figures that out, and once I know that constant, then I have a observer that tracks the actual plant. And here I'm cheating. I'm using the actual states rather than the estimated states. If I use the estimated states, this is a nonlinear system. 
Uh, as it drifts further, I get a bigger disturbance and just kind of takes off. So one way around that is to modify it. Sort of cheat. Let the observer converge. So for the first five seconds, I'm going to use the actual states. Give the observer a chance to converge. So after five seconds, I'll then switch over to the observer states. And so when I run this, we'll set the following. First five, first five seconds, it is trying to figure out what constant do I need to force the output to match the plant, figuring out the extra torque due to the extra mass. Once it figures that out, I switch over to the actual plant at five seconds. It's about now. So then I want to change the set point. It's now using the observer states. And that's the cheat that's here. Let the observer states converge and then start using them. So that's input disturbances. If I have an output disturbance, then I model that as follows. I take my plant, add to it an extra state. That state is the dynamics of my disturbance, which in this case is a constant. That constant gets fed to the output. This is an open loop integrator. Its initial condition is my integration constant. That's my disturbance. In state space, I'll model it as follows. The plant plus the disturbance, or offset, is diagonal. The B matrix, B only affects the plant, not the disturbance. The C matrix, however, sees both the plant and the constant offset. Uh, let's see. So for the heat equation, if I set up the um, observer dynamics as follows, the augmented system, plant, disturbance, all these open loop, the B matrix affects the plant, the C matrix sees both the plant output and the disturbance. It sees this guy right here. Place the poles to make it stable. And here's your augmented system. Plant, disturbance, state estimates, estimated disturbance. If I give it an initial condition, disturbance of two, again, the observer figures out that disturbance and then tracks the states. Here's what that looks like. I've got an output disturbance of 1, so the measured output is different than the actual output by 1. I can take that into account with the full order observer. It's the observer, plus I augment it with a, an open loop integrator that estimates my output disturbance, which gets added into the output. What that looks like is the following. Initially, the error at the output is 1. It's then doing a search. This little dot on the left is how much that constant offset, the estimate is. Once it figures out the estimate, the offset is 1, the actual output and the estimated output converge. And that counts for an output disturbance. Now the last case. Suppose I have both an input disturbance and an output disturbance. Can I estimate them both? Well, you'd think the answer would be yes, because with servo compensators, if I design for a tracking constant set point, I'm also rejecting constant disturbance. Well, in this case, the answer is actually no. And you can see that as follows. Suppose I have an input disturbance and an output disturbance, along with the plant. The block diagram is as follows. The state space model is your x dot equals ax plus bu uh, plus b times ci times the input disturbance. The input disturbance, xi dot, is ai times xi. The output disturbance is a out, or xi out dot, or xl dot, is a out times x out. The output then y is c out times x out plus c times x. Now let's see if this is observable. We'll do the PBH test, which says the rank of c 
a minus lambda i must be full rank for all lambda. If we look at this system, the plant presumably is observable. But these guys right here, if the spectra of the input disturbance matches the spectra of the output disturbance, I lose rank. So this is only observable if the input disturbance is at a different frequency than the output disturbance. Or, another way of saying it, if both the input is a constant and the output is a constant, I can't separate them. All I see is, kind of take, take the case where u equals zero, my output is a constant. I could contribute that constant entirely to the output disturbance. I could contribute that constant entirely to the input disturbance. Or I could do half and half. I basically have one equation, two unknowns. There's no way to solve for those two independently, which tells you that this system is not observable. Not observable means you cannot build the observer for it. Instead, what you have to do is, if I have a constant disturbance, I have to a priori decide, is it an input disturbance? Is it an output disturbance? Is it a combination? Is it 40% input, 60% output? I've got to pre-decide that. Once I do that, then I have a single integrator. Uh, 0.4 goes here, 0.6 goes there. I just have to estimate one constant. I can estimate one constant with a single output. I can't estimate two constants. So that's the limitation with the disturbances. I can do input disturbances or output disturbances. I can't do both. So in summary, if you have an input disturbance, you can add states to model the disturbance and design a full order observer for the augmented system. If you have an output disturbance, you can add states to model the disturbance at the output and design a full order observer for the augmented system. However, if you have both input and output disturbances, you're just out of luck. The system's not observable. That means there's no information there. You can't do any trickery. No mathematical trickery will allow you to do something which is, is impossible. There's just no information. So that's lecture number 20, no, lecture number 21, Observers and Disturbances for ECE 463, Modern Control.